Welcome back to Spell Tutorial Services. In today's video, we're going to take an equation that has exponential terms and turn it into a quadratic so that we can solve for the value of x. So let's begin. First, we notice we have these two exponential, um, exponential factors. So to get rid of those exponentials, I'm going to substitute one of them for a variable. I'm going to make the variable uh, u. It could be any variable that you like. We're just using u for this for this tutorial. So I'm going to set u is equal to 3x, I'm sorry, 3 raised to the x. So that means u squared is going to be equal to 3 raised to the x raised to the second power. We know from our rules of exponents that anytime you uh, raise a power to a power, you keep the base and you multiply the exponents. So in this case, x times 2 to give us 2x. And we do that so that we can now make a substitution back into this original equation. We have 2 and that's being multiplied by 3 raised to the 2x. But we've just said that is the same as the substitution of u squared and then plus 5 um, and that's multiplied by 3 to the x and that was our original substitution so that just becomes 5u and that there is now set equal to 12. Alright now we have a quadratic that we're used to. We know the first step in solving a quadratic is to set the quadratic equal to 0 so I'm going to actually end up subtracting 12 from both sides. So I end up with 2u squared plus 5u minus 12 equals 0. And now I want to use the quadratic equation. Now we know that the value of u will be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that divided by 2a. This quadratic is in standard form, so the values of a, b, and c will correspond to the coefficients in the order in which we see them. So the first coefficient is 2, the second coefficient is 5, and the third constant is negative 12. Now we're going to go and substitute these values into the quadratic equation. So I have a negative 5 plus or minus. Well, b is a 5, so 5 squared is 25, minus 4 times a times c. Well, a times c gives me a negative 24, and negative 24 times this negative 4 actually gives me a positive 96 and all of this is divided by 2 times the value of a which in this case is also 2 so 2 times 2 to give me 4 then I continue to to uh, simplify so I have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 96 which is 121 and all that is divided by 4 well the square root of 121 is a perfect square so that comes out to be 11 so negative 5 plus or minus 11 divided by 4 and now because I have this plus or minus that means I can separate this um, equation or this expression here into two separate um, equations so the first one is u is equal to negative 5 plus or minus I'm sorry negative 5 plus let's do the plus one first negative 5 plus 11 divided by 4 and the second one is u is equal to negative 5 minus 11 divided by 4. Well, with the first one, negative 5 plus 11 gives me a positive 6 divided by 4, which gives me a 3 halves. And then here for the second one, negative 5 minus 11 gives me a negative 16 divided by 4, which gives me a negative 4. But we see that both of these solutions are in terms of u. We don't want in, in terms of u. We want it in terms of x. So that just means we make another substitution going back to x. u is the same thing as 3 raised to the x. So our first equation is 3 raised to the x is equal to 3 halves. And the second equation is 3 raised to the x is equal to negative 4. Let's focus on the second one first. We know that for any value that we plug into x, our output is not going to be negative. So we can disregard negative 4 as a solution. Now let's go to the um, to the equation we have or the expression we have on the left hand side. Uh, to get this x in a position where we can solve for it, we need to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 3 raised to the x is equal to the natural log of 3 halves. By the properties of logarithms, we know this x can come to the front because it's the power. So this turns into x times the natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of 3 halves. To get the x by itself, we divide both sides by the natural log of 3. Those cancel, and we end up with x equal to the natural log of 3 halves divided by the natural log of 3. 
All right, now that we've set up this fraction, let's use the calculator to find out what its decimal equivalent is. All right, press the alpha button and then the y equals. We want the option one to show up as a fraction. We want the natural log of three divided by two. And I'm gonna divide that by the natural log of three. And we see this comes out to be approximately uh, three and uh, 600 I'm sorry, 369 thousandths. So let's place that here, 369 thousandths. And we want to verify this using the, using the graphing utility with the calculator. So let's go to y equals, and let's put in the equation, which was 2 times 3 raised to the 2x power. And that's plus 5 times 3 raised to the x power minus 12. Alright, and then we go to graph this. Alright, I've already set up the window so it's easily seen. And we see the yellow so it's it's working and momentarily we should see the graph. Alright, and there's the graph there. Still doing some calculations but we're going to use the zero functionality of the calculator to figure out where this graph crosses uh, the x-axis. So we're going to click the second button, click where it says trace to get the calcs, and we want to select option two, which is the zero, and then it asks for the left bound. Um, I messed that up. Let's do it again. So second and trace. I want two to get the zeros. Here, let's move. Let's move to the left of that intersection, and press enter for the left bound. Here, they want the right bound. So let's move to the right of where it crosses, press enter again. It's asking for a guess, but we want the calculator to figure out where that value is between that lower, between the left and right bound, the lower and upper bound. So we press enter again. And we see the calculator tells us that the zero is approximately at 369 thousandths, just like we calculated by hand. All right, that sums it up for this video by Spell Tutorial Services. Please friend us on Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel both found under the same name. And as always, thank you again for watching.